Hi, everybody. Good morning, Fort Bend County. Good morning, Sienna, and welcome to VipeFortBend.com coverage of Fort Bend ISD basketball. we got a full day for you, starting with the Ridgepoint Panthers in a morning game taking on the West Columbia Roughnecks. I'm Roger Smith, wishing you a belated Merry Christmas and an early Happy New Year. We've got lots of games for you. Leading up until Friday, we'll have two on New Year's Eve day, and then we'll ring in the new year with you on 2022, but we won't broadcast that. We'll just have a lot of fun. We'll step aside real quickly and bring you our pregame visit with the, the new head coach of the Ridgepoint Panthers, Darren Johnson. He's got them off to a winning start. They have started district play. This, of course, is not a district game, but we're going to bring it to you, and we'll talk about what has gone well for the Ridgepoint Panthers who are a team with great potential. They've also got a few pro-jock genes on their side. Those can always be helpful. We'll step aside and be back. This is VibeFortMen.com. The First Tire and Automotive family wishes you happy holidays with these Merry Christmas of savings. 10% off any and all repairs or $15 off an oil change. Head to the website FirstTireAndAuto.com and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive has supported school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to VipeFortBend.com. Coverage of tournament basketball between Christmas and New Year's. It's the most wonderful time of the year, isn't it, Coach Darren Johnson of Rich Point? It is, absolutely. Happy to be back and happy to be able to play this year. Well, we're hoping that we can bring you two Ridge Point games today because if you win this morning game against West Columbia, that means that you'll play at 4.30 against either Kempner or Texas City. That is correct. Sure would be fun for us if it was Kempner. Don't know if the Cougars will be able to pull off the victory. But what can you tell us about your team thus far? It looks like you've been doing pretty well. Uh, we've come a long way. Uh, we started out, you know, a lot of new guys, new faces. Uh, obviously, I was new to them. Um, but the kids have done a really good job of buying in. Um, they've been working hard, and we're still a work in progress for sure. Um, but the kids are coming along well, and you know we got a big victory before we went to the break. Uh, so they helped us out a little bit, and hoping to get back in the rhythm now. And I noticed that you did play some pretty tough competition in pre-district, and, and I guess there's no such thing as pre-district because you've already played one district game and won that one, but you're kind of back into tournament play for a little bit while uh, it, you know, you'll get back into the district games again soon, but who are the guys that have really made a big difference for you? For us this year, uh, we've had really good play from our point guard, uh, TJ. Uh, he's done a really good job. Um, Jameer Norman and Conley Christmas have, have come on for us a lot. Um, adding Wilson um, from football, he's still kind of getting his basketball legs under him. Um, his leadership, his toughness helps us a lot. Um, and then we've had really, really good shooting from our guys. Um, that, that's kind of their job, and they've done a really good job doing that. And the overarching thing of all of it is I think we've done a really good job of defending, um, which for us in our district you have to. Um, and they've bought into the defensive side of the ball, which has helped us a lot. We're talking with Darren Johnson, the first-year head varsity coach at Ridge Point after spending last year and I believe the season before that at Willow Ridge. And I'll be honest with you, it's really hard to research teams that you're not familiar with at holiday time. But what do you know about West Columbia? Is there anything that you can tell us about them? Um, yes. What I know is that they're going to play hard. Um, I've, I've played them in the past at some other stops. Um, really tough kids. They're, they'll defend well. They're really gritty. Um, I think it, after Christmas break, you never know how either your team is going to come out. So it'll be interesting to see um, early on how it goes. And I think we better be ready for, for a competitive game um, to kind of hopefully knock the rust off. But we'll see. Well, speaking of being ready, I think we're going to get started here pretty soon. So thank you very much for joining us on uh, what might be, no, I, I guess there's a good chance we'll talk to you this afternoon. I was about to say the last countdown to tip-off show of 2021, <laughs> but there, there will be more. So thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. All right. All right we'll be back and get it started right after this on VibeFortBend.com. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. 
That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12 6 Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity, 600 megabits per second to AT&T, 500 megabits per second, each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10 6 Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. Good morning again, everybody. Welcome to Clute, Texas, beautiful downtown Clute. As we bring you the Brazos Wood versus the Ridgepoint Panthers, well, actually, it's the West Columbia Roughnecks against the Ridgepoint Panthers in the first game today. Well, it's the first game period, I believe, of this invitational holiday tournament that they have at both Brazos Wood and Brazos Port High Schools. I'm Roger Smith. Glad to be with you. And we're going to add some sound for you. We really have to because we're in a gym where there aren't a lot of fans because, you know, it's... 9 a.m. the Tuesday after Christmas. And here we go. Speaking of Christmas, it is Connolly Christmas of Ridgepoint Jumping Center, and the Ridgepoint Panthers control the tap. And here goes Wilson Batiste flying to the hoop, and he lays it off the glass, and good. Wilson Batiste, fresh off the football team. The Ridgepoint Panthers went into the third round of the football playoffs, and Wilson Batiste is a big part of what's going on at Ridgepoint. He's one of the starters along with Tate Yannick. Jameer Norman Turner, T.J. Ford Jr., and there is a need to call him Jr., and Conley Christmas, who won the opening tap. The free throw is up, and there's a whistle and a lane violation against Ridgepoint, and so West Columbia will get it, trailing 2 to nothing here in the first six seconds of the game. There are two gyms on the Brazoswood High School campus, and this is one where play is going on. Into the forecourt, they get it to... Shavaris Blackman, but he loses the ball, taken away, and it was Wilson Batiste who made the steal. T.J. Ford Jr. sends it over there in the corner, and another layup attempt by Wilson Batiste. Jameer Norman Turner had passed it off to him, but it is Norman Turner who grabs the rebound of the missed shot, puts it back up, and scores. It is two to nothing, Ridge Point on the inbounds pass. Tate Yannick, a senior who averages 7.2 points per game. Knocked the ball away. It's still going to belong to West Columbia. And Wilson Batiste is guarding the inbounder, Ty Johnson. Gets the pass in. Stolen quickly from Yannick to Batiste. He blows the bunny, but it's a quick follow and good by Jameer Norman Turner. He averages 10.6 points per game. And there is a steal by Ridgepoint. Wilson Batiste off to Ford. Now it's Yannick in the corner. Launches a three on the way. Long, no good. Conley Christmas the rebound. Goes up, thought he was fouled, and it comes down to Wilson Batiste, and they reset it. Long three-pointer, top of the key, T.J. Ford Jr., and the rebound to West Columbia's Shavaris Blackman. Here goes Blackman, coast to coast, all the way down the floor, but he misses a tough luck shot, rolls off, and Conley Christmas grabs the rebound. He almost goes coast to coast, now sends it to Yannick, back inside, fade away, Jameer Norman, a whistle, and it's a foul on Jameer Norman trying to get himself free. When I talked about adding the sound, I'm going to hook up yet another microphone so it'll sound louder and more fun because it is the spirit of the holidays. West Columbia gets it into the forecourt and a two-pointer along the baseline from Cassius Davidson is no good. Ridgepoint quickly down the floor and Jameer Norman, Jameer Norman Turner has the ball stripped away as he goes up to shoot. Connolly Christmas will inbound the ball after it went out of bounds. Last touched by West Columbia into Norman Turner at the right elbow. Quickly underneath to Connolly Christmas with a backdoor layup. It's good 7-0, make it 8-0 
Ridgepoint on top. West Columbia's had a tough time this year and they're having a tough time here early in this game. But they do get into the forecourt there, Ty Johnson. Now it is Shavaris Blackman, pulls up at the right elbow, his shot is no good, one and done. Connolly Christmas quickly back down there to Jameer Norman Turner. He's gonna go in for an almost dunk and it rattles out, that's embarrassing. Still eight nothing, but it's back in the hands of West Columbia and a near basket there on the layup attempt, the finger roll by Ty Johnson and a couple of players touched it and it went out of bounds. The last fingertips to touch it belong to a West Columbia roughneck. There goes Wilson Batiste from the left side, draws the foul on the way to the hoop. Cassius Johnson, or I should say Cassius Davidson, got him on the arm. 5.42 to go in quarter number one. Two shots coming for Wilson Batiste, 6.2 points per game average, 6'3", senior, great wide receiver on the football team. But before we get free throws, we're going to get a timeout, and we'll take it with them. This is Roger Smith with you on VibeFortBend.com. We'll be back right after this. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Coming out of the timeout, Ridgepoint will shoot free throws. They already lead West Columbia by a score of 8 to nothing, and it'll be Wilson Batiste at the line. All right. You know, I should have hooked up that microphone during that timeout. I was just kind of enjoying a peppermint. First free throw is good, 9 to nothing. First substitution of the game, Cam Page comes in for West Columbia, replacing Blake Osteen. I was going to say no relation, but I really don't know that. And the second free throw also good by Wilson Batiste, and we've got a 10 to nothing game. And stolen by Yannick in the corner, but he stepped on the line before he could throw a pass to Wilson Batiste. Ridgepoint is going to keep up the full court pressure until West Columbia proves that they can break it or if this game gets really, really out of hand, which it has the potential to do. Connolly Christmas tips an inbounds pass, and it ends up going off of Cam Page out of bounds, and it belongs to Ridgepoint. 5.37 to go in quarter number one. T.J. Ford throwing it in along the baseline. Looking, looking, looking. And the pass is tipped and stolen away. Nice play, Shavaris Blackman. He's going to take it all the way to the hoop himself. Bounces it off the glass too hard, no good. And it's Conley Christmas, the rebound for the Panthers, and he brings it across the midcourt stripe. Top of the key. There goes Jameer Norman, and he lays it off for Wilson Batiste in an easy two, dropping a dime, making it 12 to nothing. Ridgepoint on top of... West Columbia, Tate Yannick steals the inbounds pass. The three is good, and it is 15 to nothing. And we're not even three minutes into this game. Full court press still applied by the Panthers. Yannick almost got him another steal, and they're running out of time to get it across the midcourt stripe, and that's a 10-second violation. Great defense on the part of Ridgepoint. You know, Tate Yannick, who just made that three-pointer, has the same pronunciation and same last name spelling as Grace Yannick, who is going to be a four-year varsity star for the Ridgepoint softball team, but they are not related. To the hoop goes T.J. Ford. He scores his first basket. He's got a 16.6 per game average, and that leads the Panther team. And there's a foul in the backcourt. Tate Yannick trying to get another steal. 
Gage Rayleigh comes into the game for West Columbia, and he replaces Trayvon High. Seventeen to nothing, our score. Ridge Point trying to throw a perfect game. It looks like against these West Columbia Roughnecks. Cam Page has it in the backcourt. They do get across the timeline. That's a small victory in itself when you're down 17 to nothing. Chauncey Shaw is now into the game for Ridge Point, playing aggressive defense, but he commits a foul. It's on the floor. And the Roughnecks will inbound at the far side of the court. Shavaris Blackman sends it in. Gets the ball back, goes to the hoop. It rattles out, no good. Rebound, comes down to Ridge Point. Another guy's just into the game. It's Stephen Connell. Calling for the ball in the midcourt circle, but Wilson Batiste, jump stop, move off the left side, lays it up and in off the glass. It's 19 to nothing. And now West Columbia throws away a pass. They're trying to get it all the way down the floor to Ty Johnson, but there was nothing Ty could do because the ball was simply thrown where no one could catch it in bounds. There goes Shaw, going to keep it himself. Wraparound pass to Connell underneath. And it's a layup that rolls off no good. Fight for the ball underneath the hoop. And it's a held ball. And it'll belong to West Columbia. Also on the floor for Ridge Point is Gabriel Bro. He's also a former football player. As Cam Page gets the ball in bounds for West Columbia. Now it's Ty Johnson into the forecourt. Almost lost it. Fighting through a double team, sends it over on the left side to Shavaris Blackman. And there he goes in and scores the first basket of the game for West Columbia. It is 19 to two. Chauncey Shaw, who is a junior for Ridge Point. They have a lot of seniors on today's team. He is called for the offensive foul as he elbowed his defender out of the way. That's Blackman. Both ball clubs with two team fouls. 3.41 to go in the first quarter, and it's 19-2, Ridge Point on top. Panthers come into the game with a record of 10-6, and and they're 1-0 in District 26A play. Cam Page in trouble in the backcourt, and a steal by Ridge Point. All kinds of bodies on the floor, and coming out of there is Blackman for West Columbia. Off the left side, thought he was fouled. His layup is no good. He was expecting to get a foul call against Gabriel Bro. But as he fought to, to get the rebound of his own miss, Blackman was fouled, not in the act of shooting. So the Roughnecks will inbound the ball underneath the basket at the left end, the basket at which they're shooting. Shaw almost with a steal on the inbounds pass. Three-pointer from the top of the key. No good by Gage Rayleigh. But the long rebound goes to West Columbia. Cassius Davidson sends the ball to Blackman. Long three from the left wing. No good. Rebound fought for and taken down by Shaw. He's going to push it down the far left sideline. Runs out of room in the corner, kills his dribble. Trying to make a pass, but there's good aggressive defense on the part of Rayleigh. And he is called for a push. Derek Humbird, H-U-M-B-I-R-D, comes into the game for the Roughnecks. By the way, whatever happened to great nicknames for high school teams? Roughnecks is as good an example as you can have. Ridge Point inbounding the ball. Connell underneath the basket. Strong arms it up and good. He split the defenders, Humbird and Page. On the way to the hoop and it's 21 to two. Blackman into the forecourt, guarded by Shaw and now there's a throw away. Wilson Batiste has it. It's two on two. Batiste from the right side, high off the glass. No good, Bro tries for the rebound but he steps out of bounds as he had a fingertip on the ball. 2.35 to go. Ridge Point's going to make a substitution. They bring in Ben Rotondo. Wilson Batiste, after a short stint, comes out. And you can expect that Darren Johnson and his staff are going to do a lot of substituting because, you know, you're going to have at least two games today and probably multiple games tomorrow. And a tough luck shot by West Columbia. Rattles out. Stephen Connell, the rebound for Ridge Point. Shaw pulls up, right wing, back to Connell, right elbow. Jumper on the way, back iron, no good. High rebound, fought for and taken by James Farr. Now there's another Ridge Point move to the hoop. 
Gabriel Bro inside, knocked down by a couple of defenders, and he will go to the line for two shots. Darren Johnson, two seasons at Willow Ridge before taking over at Ridge Point, where Terrence Plowden was the coach for several seasons. Bro hits the first free throw, and it's 22-2. They have pull-out bleachers over on the far side of Jim B here at Brazoswood High School, but they're not pulling them out today. You got people sitting on molded plastic chairs on a rubber pad. Both free throws good, 23 to two. Ridge Point very much in command of this game against West Columbia to start this tournament here at Brazoswood. Three from the left corner is no good by Ty Johnson. But the long rebound taken by West Columbia. Johnson gets it back. Two-pointer from in close, but it's an air ball. It's absolutely nothing in Ridge Point pushing it. There goes Shaw on the three on two, and Rowe lost a handle on it. Couldn't get the shot off. Taken away by West Columbia. There goes Blackman along the right baseline, waiting for his teammates to catch up. He was the first one down the floor. And there's a steal. There goes Bro. Took it away, and off the glass, and good. That will count. It'll make it 25 to two, and Gabriel Bro will go to the line for one more shot. I was checking out the Max Preps record of the West Columbia Roughnecks. They have a, a talented team, but very, very young, and they've just had a hard time of it this year. Still looking for their first win. Gabriel Bro. Hits the free throw to make it 26 to two. 125 to go in quarter number one. Roger Smith with you on VibeFortBend.com. We'll have three games today. The second one will be Kempner against Texas City on this very floor. There's a three pointer from the left wing and it's no good by Cassius Davidson. But those three pointers seem to help because when they miss, there's a long rebound and the shorter West Columbia team can get some boards. There is a push by the Ridge Point defender, Ben Rotondo. There's only one sophomore on this Ridge Point varsity roster, and that's Chauncey Shaw. Nothing but juniors and seniors throughout the rest of the lineup. Inbound into the backcourt, West Columbia trailing by 24 with one minute to go in the first. Blackman taking his time, moves over toward the corner. Hands the ball off to Cassius Davidson. They work the perimeter, Neil, near steal by Shaw. There goes Blackman, ran out of room at the right elbow, kicked it back out to Davidson. His shot is short, no good. Rebound kept alive, but Bro saves it for Ridge Point. 40 seconds to go. Across the midcourt stripe is Ben Rotondo. Gets it back, launches it. Three on the way, missed everything. No good, but the rebound, Connell puts it up. And it goes around the rim once and then falls in. Another three-point play opportunity. Gage Rayleigh called for the foul. And we'll have Blake Osteen check into the game. 26 and a half seconds to go before the end of the first quarter. And I wonder if Stephen Connell's parents are um, fans of the old television program, Hill Street Blues. That was produced by Stephen J. Connell. Spells his last name the same way. And uh, spells Stephen the same way. The free throw was good. It's 29-2, and Ridge Point grabs a steal. Shaw to Connell, drives the baseline, and came up short on the little... The little cripple shot, and it's taken away by Blackman. Here comes West Columbia, five seconds to go. He pulls up, right wing, going all the way to the hoop. Puts it up, no good. Rebound, Connell, and that will do it for the first quarter. Ridge Point dominates, and they lead by a score of 29-2. to two. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. 
Our staff can assist you with outsourcing or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Second quarter begins. Ridgepoint leading West Columbia 29-2 after one quarter. Ridgepoint with an offensive foul on its first possession of quarter number two. And now West Columbia has it and into the game for the first time or handling the ball, I should say, for the first time. Trayvon High, and an inbounds pass to Osteen. His shot rattles out, no good in the rebound by Ethan Willenborg. One of those Ridgepoint seniors, and he throws away the outlet pass. Stolen by Blackman, he goes up strong, and he draws the foul. We'll turn up the official's volume. Well, he didn't say it quite enough, and he doesn't really, frankly, need to be loud in this particular gym. As we're joined by fewer than 100 of our very closest friends for this post-Christmas party. First free throw is no good by Blackman. We'll have Kempner and Texas City right after this one, just a few minutes after it's over. Blackman hits the second free throw. It's 29-3. to three. T.J. Ford back on the floor for the Panthers. Sends it over the midcourt stripe. Now it's Wilson Batiste backing in. He's double teamed, if not triple teamed, but he traveled before he got his shot in the air. And correction, that was not Wilson Batiste. It's Marvin Johnson who is just into the game. Still defensive pressure in the backcourt by the Panthers, but not as much. And West Columbia is able to walk it across the timeline with Derek Humberg. Now it's Blackman between the rings. Thought about a three, but he drives the right restraining line, puts it up, shot partially blocked. And here comes Ridgepoint with the three on two. Pulling up his forward three-pointer, good. Nothing but net. And it's 32 to three. Now Ridgepoint. Putting on the pressure again, but West Columbia breaks it. Blackman under the hoop, can't find his shot. Kicks it back out for a three. No good by Trayvon High. Rebound by Ridgepoint, ahead to Ford. Back door off the lay, off the window, no good. Rebound is grabbed by Ethan Willenborg, but he was fouled before he could get the shot up, and it's a one and one opportunity. This is one of those games where I have to make sure I don't talk too loud because, well, people keep turning around like I'm annoying them. But I guess when you're down 32 to three, anything annoys you. Ridgepoint playing defense. There is Osteen kicking it back out to Blackman. Three from the right wing and it's good. 32 to six is our score. Ridgepoint leading with six minutes left before the end of the first half. And Ford throws the ball away. I don't know if that was his fault or Marvin Johnson's fault or maybe a little bit of both, but Johnson didn't know it was coming and it went out of bounds on the far sideline. Blackman has it, guarded by Ford. Moves to his left, motioning around to get his teammates to move. Now he goes into the paint himself, ran out of room and had to kick it back out. Osteen now gets it back to Blackman who's moving between the rings. There's Trayvon High. Runs out of room by the baseline. Three-pointer, top of the key, in and out. No good, and the rebound by Ford. Here come the Panthers. It's a four on three. Ford stops near the top of the circle. 
holds the ball over his head and throws the ball way over there that has to be run down by Willenborg. Now it's Jameer Norman Turner looking for his shot. Makes a quick step toward the baseline, now kicks it back out to Yannick who hits the three and it's 35 to six. Ridgepoint running away with this game here in the tournament where games are being played both at Brazos Wood and at Brazosport High School. Nice layup by Ty Johnson for West Columbia, but quickly back down the four. Ridgepoint scores with Ethan Willenborg. Closing in on the four and a half minute mark of the second quarter, 37 to eight. Ridgepoint on top. There goes Blackman, runs into a double team, puts it up, he does draw the foul. Not sure if it was in the act of shooting. I guess it was. And the, the foul called on Marvin Johnson. And Blackman will shoot free throws. First one good. Nice stroke on the free throw. High arching shot. Cam Page and Cassius Davidson come back in for West Columbia. Osteen goes out, as does Humberg. Second free throw is off to the right, and it's Jameer Norman with the rebound. There he goes into the free throw circle, kicks it back out to Ford, fakes the three, moves to his left, shoots another three, in and out, no good. Rebound, Jameer Norman Page, or Norman Turner, I should say, and he drops it in for the two-pointer on the follow that makes it 39 to nine. West Columbia has had a hard time getting the ball across the mid-court stripe against the Ridgepoint full court press. They've had a hard time finding a shot. When they do get a shot, if it's missed, it's a one and done situation. Ridgepoint dominating the glass at both ends of the court. 4-10 to go in quarter number two. And Trayvon Hyde drew a foul and he'll go to the line for West Columbia. Hits the front iron and crawls over into the net to make it 39 to 10. By the way, they're doing a lot of remodeling here at Brazos Wood. It's kind of like being at Elkins High School where every time I go there, I have to use a different entrance door. Second free throw is good, it's 39 to 11. Here goes Ford with four minutes left in the half. TJ slashes through the hoop and he loses control of the basketball. So we've got Bro, Connell, Batiste, and Christmas coming back into the game for Ridgepoint. The only one that stayed on in that switch out was TJ Ford. And here is West Columbia into the forecourt. Cam Page thinks about a three. Sends it over there to Johnson, almost lost the handle. Sends it underneath, Page gets it back. And he draws a foul underneath the basket. His shot is no good, but he'll get two at the foul line. Stephen Connell called for the foul. Ridgepoint's a strong rebounding team. The leader is Connell with 7.6. Christmas and Ford both with 5.8 rebounds per game. Batiste in his short time with the team since the football season ended, five rebounds per game, and Jameer Norman Turner, 4.6. The first free throw by Page was no good. He'll shoot another. The second one is off the left rim, no good. Connolly Christmas grabs the rebound and brings it up the right sideline. And he elbows his defender out of the way. That's Blackman. And I don't think he was flopping. I think that was just uh, good defense and Christmas had to move him out of the way and he got caught. 39 to 11, Ridgepoint leads it. Near sideline, difficult job for Cassius Davidson to inbound well, the ball, but he does. Well, it's a good thing I brought some of those Christmas peppermints. There goes Blackman, right down the middle of the free throw lane. The first time he's seen enough daylight to do that and he scores to make it 39 to 13. There goes Christmas, hesitates at the free throw line and a layup no good, rattles out and West Columbia grabs a board. Blackman 
Left elbow, sends it over into the left corner. Shot on the way, Ty Johnson, no good rebound. Knocked out of bounds by Blackman and Ridgepoint will get it. Blackman showing his leaping ability. Wilson Batiste quite a bit taller than he is. And yet he was able to rise up and, and get the first touch on the ball when it came down. Wilson Batiste right through the lane. Finger roll off the back iron, no good. Still 39 to 13. And West Columbia, with under three minutes to go, will try to cut into the lead a little bit more. You got to set that series of smaller goals. If their goal was to get into double figures, they did. But now here's a steal. Wilson Batiste off the glass from the right side. Blackman and High have to share the blame there, both being a little careless with the ball near midcourt. And Ridgepoint went all the way to the hoop. It's 41 to 13. Now West Columbia looking for a shot. They'll take a good three if it's there. Blackman on the left wing and Ford reached in. They're going to call TJ for the foul. So the Willow Ridge connection for Ridgepoint is that TJ Ford Jr.'s dad, of course, became a star with the Eagles and won a state championship. And now Darren Johnson, who spent two years as the varsity head coach at Willow Ridge, is now driving the bus, so to speak, at Willow Ridge. Blackman's first free throw is good. This really is an unusual situation in which to broadcast because I don't really like for the people around me at the game to, to hear me. I don't want them to be distracted, but when you have a, a tournament game such as this and there's just not a lot of ancillary noise, they're going to hear you once in a while. Second free throw good. And it's 41-15 to 15 Ridgepoint leading with 2.17 to go in the half. Sure would be great if we could get T.J. Ford's dad to come over here and give us a halftime interview, but you know what? I can't go over there and get him. I'm a one-man gang. Ridgepoint scores again. Conley Christmas with a nice assist from Wilson Batiste. Wilson rose up and at the apex of his leap, just a little flip of the wrist, kind of like a sky hook to his teammate. And there's a two-pointer long by Gage Rayleigh. Ridgepoint grabs the rebound in the open court. There goes Connell, and he's called for the offensive foul. And I think that's a good call. He elbowed Gage Rayleigh out of the way. 43 to 15 with 145 to go in the first half. The winner of this game will play the winner of Kempner and Texas City. And those two teams will play each other in the second game of the day on this court. And the two winners will get to play, uh, you know, in the nice gym, Gym A, closer to the front door. Minute and a half to go, and it's 43 to 15. Davidson kicks it back out, and the three-pointer on the way by Ty Johnson is no good. Ball goes out of bounds. And the Panthers were the last team to touch it. Trayvon High will inbound. And he does get it in to Ty Johnson. Johnson can't find his shot. Gives it back to High. Over in the left corner, it is Rayleigh. Now inside to Cam Page. Backing in on Connell. Gets around him. Lays it off the glass for two. First basket of the game for Cam Page. One minute to go in the first half, 43 to 17, Ridgepoint on top. Shaw left wing, side to side dribble, gets around his man, goes to the hoop and lays it in. Nice finger roll with the left hand. And it's 45 to 17. No backcourt pressure as Trayvon High walks it across for West Columbia. Now it's Humbird, cross court pass to Ty Johnson, back to Humbird, left elbow, almost lost it. Kills his dribble into Page, backing in. Now it's back to Rayleigh, flies toward the hoop. Ran over his defender, and it's an offensive foul drawn by Stephen Connell. Taking the punishment. Seems like Stephen Connell is involved in offensive fouls, whether he commits them or draws them. But it's nice to have, you know, those enforcers on your team. 
Rayleigh out of the game for West Columbia. 26 and a half seconds to go. They haven't started the clock. Now they have. Shaw walks it across the timeline. Now Bro has it. Bro moves to the left restraining line. Gets free underneath. Misses, but Shaw follows it. 47 to 17. 10 seconds to go. West Columbia in the forecourt. Blackman moving to the top of the key. Kills his dribble. Knifes between two defenders and scores. Four seconds to go. Shaw looking down the floor. Launches a long one, but it's blocked in the open court by Ty Johnson. And that's how the first half ends. 47 to 19. Ridgepoint on top of West Columbia. We'll be back with the halftime activities and I'm, I'm going to try to think about what they should be during this commercial break on VibeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12 6 -21. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. The First Tire and Automotive family wishes you happy holidays with these Merry Christmas of savings. 10% off any and all repairs or $15 off an oil change. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive has supported school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. We're back at Brazoswood and it's halftime as Ridgepoint leads West Columbia 47-19. We're going to have two games this morning. The second one is Texas City taking on the Kempner Cougars and it's a great opportunity. Thank you, Coach Chris Mason of Texas City we're talking to us and you know how football dominates the early part of the basketball season uh, tell us give us a summary of of your team's season thus far well right now we're sitting at um at nine and seven on the year and um i think two and two in district and i just think 
you know, uh, 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 with our team. I mean, I think a record speaks for itself. We've uh, won some good games. We've lost, you know, uh, uh, a lot of close games. And uh, like I said, we're uh, we're just trying to find some consistency with this tournament. And also, you know, we got you know 12 more games left in district. So uh, they're trying to find a little consistency and hopefully get on the run, get on the run and get one of those four playoff spots. And your team plays in Region Three, correct? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, we always say one of the toughest regions in the state. The Dallas area has been kind of dominating the state tournament, but I always say we got to fight each other so hard to get there. Then, like I said, and then uh, you know, it's uh, it's tough. It's, it's one of the best regions and some of the best athletes, some of the best guards, and um, it's a tough region, but it's good for us. Yeah, I mean, if you come out of Region Three, you know you're a great basketball team. And the interesting thing about it to me is that it's not the same team year after year. I mean, we kind of know what, what Duncanville has yes. rolling. I don't know if anyone's ever going to be able to stop it because there are people that move to Duncanville to play on that team. It's very elite, but I think it's actually more fun to watch what goes on in Region 3. Well, you know, uh, and, and Coach Peavy at, at Duncanville is a really good friend of mine, and I, t- I always tell him, I said, hey, you know, you're getting it done, but – we're getting it done with homegrown people, you know. But uh, <laughs> Duncanville, like I said. I'm glad you said yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Duncanville, like I said, is the PV does a great job. I mean, no matter what kids that go there. And, you know, you're going to pretty much know who comes out of the Dallas area, whether it's Duncanville sometime at one point with the Soto and, you know, maybe uh, South Oak Clip and Houston, with the exception of Yates a few years. And, you know, but really no one just uh, dominates year in and year out. It's uh, always something new. And, and like you said, there's not a lot of move in and there's not a lot of move out. So, that's why it's so different for us to sit down every year. And you mentioned Yates, and I think this year there's a very good chance that Houston Booker T. Washington could win that district, and it would be refreshing for someone other than Yates to win. So, you know, one thing that I know, Coach Mason, about your Texas City team, I know that they've got to be pretty good because they keep appearing on Todd Freed's H-Town High School yeah. Sports. So how do you feel about that? Well, like I said, we got a uh, – it's a uh, it's, uh, – we got a kind of a mix. We got a few seniors who are like inexperienced, but we got some young guys who've been there before. You know, of course, Clovis McCain, who after the round 20 a game for me, and Anson, uh, he's a back of 6'4", 6'5", junior, and Anson Johnson, who's a 6'6", you know, like sophomore. And so we, we, we play a really good schedule, and we played it for a reason. We like to play the, you know, the best of the best. I'm watching Ridge Point play now. We played them the first game of the season and, and lost by, I think, maybe three points. But, uh, of course, they didn't have all their footballers. But, like I said, we've been pretty solid over the last uh, few years. And, uh, like I said, a little bit average and up and down this year. But, hopefully, like I said, try to find some consistency with these four games and, and for the next uh, 12 games in this And, of course, it never hurts to have pro jock jeans going for yeah. you. So, Ridge Point happens to have T.J. Ford, Jr., is there anybody with some professional basketball experience that's in the bloodline of your team this year? Well, I tell you what, he was um, uh, he played on the varsity for me for three years. Uh, Deontay Foreman, the current running back, mm-hmm. uh, son running back for the uh, for the Tennessee Titans, played mm-hmm. for a while for the Texas. But he was more of a football player, like I said, but played basketball all the way through, you know. And uh, uh, but other than that, I guess it just you know. Um, the Mason from La, from La Mesa, Texas. My brother played. I played. Did you say La Mesa? Yeah, La Mesa, Texas. The Golden Tornadoes the La Mesa, of La Mesa. Under the great coach Wayne Roberts. I've uh-huh. been there, yeah. yeah. No doubt. No so doubt. You, you came a long way east yes, yes, to yes. play came, here. Came a long way and uh, moved here and uh, had some great years at LaPorte, some really good players. And, you know, and you probably remember the La Mesa days when we played Bay City from down here in the state tournament when they had Harley Dykes and LeBradford Smith. So, uh, Started here in high school, and I'm going to get some finish up my career down on the southeast side. Well, it's fun. You know, we got some some football players who can play good basketball and vice versa, and the guy I think of first is Charlie Ward, won the Heisman <laughs> Trophy in 93, never played a down of pro football, went ne- basketball. Never played a down. It was crazy. Basketball is such a difficult difficult game, and for him to be able to do that at a, such a high level, I mean, that's amazing. And this is the state of Texas in most parts. You know, we, we share athletes. You know, we thrive on that, and I think – most good teams, you know, like I said, have a, a few uh, football players sprinkled in with some skilled basketball players, and, and that's what makes Texas, like I said, so great, and, and you know, and uh, therefore. So. All right, Coach Mason, we look forward to watching your team against Kempner in the second game of the day here on the Court B here at Brazoswood. Should be fun. I saw some game tape on them. They play hard, and so it should be fun, hopefully, for us. <laughs> Appreciate it very much. All right, nice to meet you. Thank you. That is Chris Mason of Texas City. They wear the orange and black, and they'll be taking on Kempner 
in the second game of our day. Been looking around, and I think I see some folks from Texas City here in the gym. Maybe, maybe not. Just fans, I guess. But they are the Stingerees. You know, we have some great nicknames in the gym this morning. We got the Stingerees of Texas City in game number two and the West Columbia Roughnecks who are having a rough time of it. 47-19, they trail Ridgepoint. And on their first possession of the third quarter, T.J. Ford sends it across the court to Tate Yannick, who's blocked from behind. Ty Johnson swatting it away. And it's not a foul. He got all ball, but it will belong to Ridgepoint as Connolly Christmas will inbound it along the baseline. Gets it into Jameer Norman. And Jameer Norman Turner drops it in to make it 49 to 19. So you start getting into the question of could Ridgepoint come up with a 100 point game? And West Columbia almost loses it, but Blackman with a step back two on the way, missed everything, no good. Wilson Batiste grabs the rebound. Then it's stolen back away from him. Now he gets it back, long pass. And the ball tipped out of bounds. Jameer Norman Turner battling for it. And they say that he last touched it, and so West Columbia will have it. Trailing 49-19 with 7-11 to go. Ridgepoint 10-6 in this game or in the, on the season coming into this game. And the Kempner Cougars have entered the gym with Coach Daniel Sanders, and uh, he doesn't know that I'm going to be broadcasting his game. What a surprise it'll be for Coach Sanders. But they'll be taking on the Texas City Stingerees. Blackman inside, gets it poked away by T.J. Ford, does get it back. Ty Johnson gets rid of the ball. There's a whistle, and Ridgepoint called for the foul on defense. The winner of this game will play the winner of Texas City versus Kempner at 4.30. Inbounds pass by Cassius Davidson, inbounds it into the backcourt. Nice move as he was facing a lot of defensive pressure. Now Blackman has it on the right wing, sends it in the corner to Ty Johnson. Entry pass, not there, back out to Johnson. Now he gets the ball to Trayvon High. Now right through the free throw circle, slashing is Cassius Davidson. And a little floater with one hand by Blackman is no good. Quickly back down the floor. Jameer Norman gives it to Ford, gets it back, lays it in. 51-19 is our score with 6.09 to go in the third quarter. Tate Yannick with a little backcourt pressure for these Panthers. Side to side dribble gets Trayvon High into the traffic. And there's a pushing foul called on one of the Panthers. We'll see which one it is. Tate Yannick called for the foul. Osteen comes off for West Columbia. And Cam Page comes in. And a quick pass in to, uh, to Ty Johnson for a quick corner three. He missed it, no good. One and done is the West Columbia possession. Connolly Christmas with another rebound, and at the other end, they try to fig feed the big man, and he goes inside, rattles it in. He's fouled in the act, and that'll count to make it 53-19 to with a free throw to come. Gabriel Bro now comes in. We appreciate Chris Mason, the head coach of Texas City, for joining us at halftime. This is tournament play, so you have quick turnarounds between games, and we can't always do the pregame show, but we'll try to get Daniel Sanders of Kempner before his team takes on the Stingerees. The free throw was good, 54-19, Ridgepoint leads. Blackman splits two defenders, goes along the baseline, gets the ball back, rolls it in. Great effort against four defenders. He ran through a double team and met another double team in the paint and still scored. But there goes T.J. Ford with the one-hand dunk attempt, but it's off the back iron, no good. And the ball stolen away at the other end. Wilson Batiste tries to save it as it goes out of bounds and tosses it back in, and Blackman gets an easy hoop. Right baseline, there goes Ford, tries to go up for a dunk again. He misses, but Conley Christmas follows it in. 
to make it 56 to 23. TJ Ford Jr. with a sheepish smile as he's had dunk attempts on the last two possessions and neither one of them has gone down through the hoop. But nobody will be worrying about this game, you know, in years to come. Ball poked away by Ridgepoint, but loose ball claimed by West Columbia. Now it's a fast break, one on none, off the backboard, and hot dogging it, hot dogging it, and Ridgepoint blows it. And I'll describe it in just a moment as West Columbia misses another time at the offensive end. So what happened was Jameer Norman Turner bounced the ball off the backboard to try and enable Connolly Christmas to dunk it through, but they obviously hasn't been, haven't been practicing that. And they come up empty. But uh, West Columbia came up empty at the offensive end again. There goes Jameer Norman Turner through the lane and off the left side of the hoop. Lays it up off the glass for two more. And it's 58 to 23. I'll do a little bit of math at the end of the third quarter and see if the Panthers are in a position to score 100. TJ Ford, three on two, gets it to Norman Turner. Over to Christmas for the layup that's good, 60 to 23. Shaw comes to the scoring table and we'll check in shortly and so will Marvin Johnson. Three and a half minutes to go in the third. It's been all Ridge Point. They lead 60 to 23 over West Columbia. Ty Johnson, left corner three on the way. Back iron, no good. Fight for the rebound. Comes down to Christmas. He's going to go all the way himself. Finger roll off the back iron, no good. Jameer Norman Turner puts it up. The offensive putback makes it 62 to 23. I guess that was, uh, I guess that was redundant because if it's a putback, obviously it's when you're on offense. But hey, it's tournament time. I won't ever say anything like that in a district game. So the Roughnecks will inbound on the near sideline, trailing 62 to 23. Correction, it is the Panthers inbounding. Marvin Johnson sends it back out, gets the ball back, slashes through the lane, and off the glass, right down the middle of the blue paint here at Brazoswood, and it makes it 64 to 23. Blackman between the rings, working on Shaw. Now he lets fly a three, it's off the side of the rim, no good. Shaw had a hand on the rebound and an over and back, uh, I'm sorry, over the back call against Derek Humbert of West Columbia. Timeout taken by West Columbia and we'll be back 64 to 23. Ridgepoint on top. We'll be back with more on VibeFortBend.com. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12621. Restrictions apply. New connect internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity 600 megabits per second to at t 500 megabits per second, each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10621. Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. 
Welcome back. Ridgepoint scored a basket to begin the fourth quarter. They led 66 to 23, but now two free throws good by Ty Johnson of West Columbia, and it's 66 to 25. Shaw pressured in the backcourt, splits the defense, gets it ahead to Bro. Now over on the left side, and a ball knocked away, but Shaw cleans up inside and scores for Ridgepoint. Ethan Willenborg lost the ball after Ben Rotondo threw it to him on the interior. Now Blackman has it left wing. Ty Johnson feeling it, shoots the three. No good, rebound Willenborg. Ridgepoint gonna push it. Here goes Rotondo into the forecourt, almost lost it. Ball cleaned up by Shaw. He faces a double team, goes to the hoop, passes it to Willenborg. He draws the double team and loses it out of bounds, but it was last touched by West Columbia. We got a 68 to 25 game. And I said uh, the first minute of the fourth quarter, we haven't reached the fourth quarter yet. We still have 143 to go in the third. Substitution for the Roughnecks, Cassius Davidson comes in, Ty Johnson comes out. Shaw inbounds it to Willenborg. Through the lane, pulled down hard. Ben Rotondo hits the floor hard. Gage Rayleigh grabbing the ball and Rayleigh thought he got all ball and he might be right. And Gage Rayleigh realizes that, well, he, th he thought he had fouled out. And he went over and he gave uh, one of the Ridgepoint coaches a fist bump. And uh, Rayleigh is very upset. 1.32 to go in quarter number three. We've got a technical foul on Rayleigh. And Gage Rayleigh is being escorted to the locker room by his coach. Not the head coach, but the assistant. He just lost control of his emotions, thought he got a clean block on that shot. Technical free throw by Rotondo, the first of them, no good. Here's the second one off the front iron, no good. But he'll still get two more because he was fouled in the act of shooting. All by himself at the left end of the floor. There he's got one, nothing but net. Makes it 69 to 25, ridge point on top. And the second one also good. He makes two out of four, the technicals and the two shot foul. And Ridge Point does get to keep the ball. 70 to 25, they lead it. If they score the next five points, and that means they have a three to one ratio. In other words, they will have tripled up West Columbia, but a whistle and a some kind of infraction away from the ball. They call the foul on Cassius Davidson. Non-shooting foul. Marvin Johnson inbounds it to Shaw. Shaw between the feet, dribble. Gets a pick, moves to the right baseline. Kicks it back out to Bro. Three on the way. And it's off the front iron, no good. Rebound West Columbia. Cassius Davidson cleaning up the glass. And there goes Blackman, right restraining line, puts it up. He's hit in the act of shooting. It's no good, but he'll go the line for two shots. And they call Rotondo for the foul. You have nine seniors and five juniors on the Ridge Point roster and one sophomore, that being Chauncey Shaw, as Blackman missed the first free throw. He does hit the second one, however, at 70 to 26. Shaw moves it across the timeline, one minute to go in the third. Give and go move, gets it inside, and Willenborg scores from the left side. 72 to 26, 51 seconds to go. Blackman guarded by Shaw, side to side dribble, trying to work that killer crossover. Gives the ball up, 
Now here's a three on the way by Humbird, and it's no good. Rebound Ridgepoint, they've got a three on two. And in the open court, carrying of the basketball. Marvin Johnson had the ball bounce higher than he expected. And in order to maintain, maintain control, he had to carry it a little bit. That's when you put your palm on the bottom side of the ball before turning it over and dribbling it. It's kind of an unfair advantage in which you get a little more control of the ball. There goes Blackman, hard down the right restraining line, and he's blocked as he goes to the hoop. And it's Willenborg who fouls him with 20 seconds to go. Two shots coming for Blackman. If the Panthers get three more points in this quarter, then they'll be on a pace to score 100, although I don't think that Coach Johnson is going to want that to happen. First free throw was good by Blackman. Second also good at 72-28. to 28. Here comes Shaw, looks up at the clock, dribbles across the midcourt stripe. Guarded by Blackman, gets a pick. Tries to work the give and go to Willenborg again, and it's another turnover. Cam Page in the forecourt for West Columbia. Trapped in the corner, gets it to Blackman, thinks about the three. Splits the defenders, now it is taken away. Ben Rotonda quickly ahead, launches one at the buzzer. It does not go. 72 to 28 is our score after three periods. Kempner all over West Columbia. And we'll be back after this on VibeFortBend.com with the fourth quarter. The First Tire and Automotive family wishes you happy holidays with these Merry Christmas of savings. 10% off any and all repairs or $15 off an oil change. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive has supported school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Back for the fourth quarter, Ridge Point leading West Columbia 72 to 28. Here are the final eight minutes. And just into the game for Ridge Point, James Farr threw a pass that was a little too hot for a teammate to handle in West Columbia, comes up with the possession. Trayvon High, running point guard, now gets it to Blackman at the right elbow. Bounce pass to Cam Bage, kicks it back out to Blackman, drives the baseline, and a cross court pass. Two pointer, no good from Ty Johnson. And it's Connell trying to get the basketball for Ridge Point. And he left it alone wisely because he knew it was last touch by West Columbia. And he saw what the officials had seen, so Ridge Point gets to keep it. James Farr, Chauncey Shaw, Stephen Connell, Tate Yannick, and Ben Rotondo on the floor for Ridge Point. Tate Yannick, three from the right wing. In and out, no good. Rebound. Off of Connell's hands, fight for it near the sideline. Rotondo saves it for Ridge Point. Yannick thinking about the three, now sends it over to the left side. Rotondo's three is on the way in. Good, 75 to 28. Seven minutes to go. As soon as this one is over, you can always listen to it later on the podcast if you want, but we'll have another live game at roughly 10.45, I'm going to say, would be the start time for Kempner against Texas City. And Ridge Point clearly is going to be the winner of this game, and they are going to play either Texas City or Kempner in a game at 4.30 here in beautiful downtown Clute. 
Blackman had to wait for his teammate to come touch the ball or it would have been an over and back violation. Trayvon High came over and bailed him out. Cam Page, three-pointer on the way. Ball knocked around and picked up by Ridge Point. Rotondo actually lost it. Now who's got it? It's like it's a football game. Connell now has it. He gets it taken away, and it's a held ball. Trayvon High and Stephen Connell. And the possession arrow favors West Columbia. They're going ahead and running the clock now with less than six minutes to go. Here goes Blackman, who's a talented ball player. He's the one called upon to do most of the scoring for West Columbia. Now sends it over there to Trayvon High. Back to Blackman, top of the key, three-pointer, no good. And the rebound rattles off, and it's taken by Tate Yannick. And he sends it over there to his teammate for a lay-in. And that's Ben Rotondo slashing to the hoop to make it 77 to 28, 518 to go. When this one's over, we're not going to hang around and do post-game interviews. We're just going to shut it down and then turn it back on for the game between Kempner and Texas City. Blackman has it between the rings, thinking about another three. We're under five minutes to go. He goes down to the left side of the lane, puts it up, no good. Rebound fought for, and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Shaw of Ridge Point, so West Columbia keeps it. As you can tell, both benches are still coaching. Both working at it, even though it's one-sided, you're just kind of trying to be even better in the next game. Ty Johnson passed up a jump shot. Blackman drives the baseline, puts it up, no good. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Cam Page of West Columbia. Ridge Point will move the ball down the floor. And Coach Darren Johnson telling Stephen Connell to go up for the rebound with two hands. Tate Yannick into Shaw. No look pass, gets away from Connell and it's stolen away by Ty Johnson of West Columbia with less than four minutes to go. Blackman thought about the three from the right wing. Killed his dribble, gave it up to Trayvon High. High trying to move in on Yannick. Moves to the right elbow, traveling on the play. Nice defense by Tate Yannick. Forcing Trayvon High into the turnover. 3.35 to go. 77 to 28 is our score. Tate Yannick holds the ball over his head. Now inside the free throw circle to Connell. Kicks it back out to Shaw. Drives the baseline. Back out to Yannick. Three on the way. Off the right rim. No good. Shaw the rebound. No good. Connell the follow. No good. And Cam Page finally gets the rebound for West Columbia. And here come the Roughnecks. Blackman moving into the paint, surrounded by defenders, backs it out of there. Three minutes to go, West Columbia in the white uniforms with the maroon numerals surrounded or lined in gray, and Yannick with the steal for Ridge Point puts it up. No good, but the follow is good by James Farr, who hit the floor. 79 to 28 is our score. Blackman, three on the way, but it was blocked. And I couldn't see who blocked it because I am standing behind the bench. I suppose I could stand up. But there are some tall people on the bench. I just qualify for the six foot and under league, if that tells you anything. West Columbia inbounds, trailing 79-28. Ty Johnson, three from the top of the key, no good. Rebound, Ridge Point. And it's Tate Yannick who backs it out. Ridge Point in no hurry to take a shot. Shaw moves to his right. Now he's between the rings. And the ball is knocked away in a steal by West Columbia. There goes Ty Johnson toward the hoop. And it's knocked away. Nice hustle defense on the part of James Farr, who could have given up on the play and just let Johnson go to the rack. But he didn't do that. He kept working on it. The clock continues to run as it's kind of a coach's courtesy thing to do when a game is well out of hand. 
Cam Page thinking about the long shot from the elbow and the ball knocked away by James Farr. And Farr is tripped as he dived for the ball. Derek Humbird called for that foul and neither team is over the limit yet and so there won't be free throws and the clock keeps ticking while James Farr waits to throw the ball in. Into Shaw, Ridgepoint just playing out the string on an easy victory here this morning. Far from the left elbow, gives the ball up. Now gets it back inside. Little baby hook from inside and it's good. James Farr scores to make it 81 to 28 and we're under a minute to go. Remember, we're gonna say a very quick goodbye when this one is over. Cassius Davidson almost lost the ball. Bro, a near steal. Davidson has the ball back. Now Cam Page moving in along the right baseline. Runs out of room. Now they go all the way over to the left wing. And the shot is no good by Ty Johnson. The clock is at 24 seconds. We got a whistle. And it'll still be West Columbia ball. The call was on Gabriel Bro. Clock still running. West Columbia wanting one more shot here. Five seconds left. Humbird, now Cam Page, realizes what time it is. He better shoot. He decided not to. And that's how it ends. 81 to 28. Ridgepoint improves to 11 and 6 on the season. And Ridgepoint fans, we will see you at 4.30 this afternoon when your team takes on either Texas City or Kempner. Glad you were with us for VibeFortBend.com presentation of Fort Bend County ISD, our Fort Bend ISD and Fort Bend County High School Sports. We are your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. Roger Smith saying a very quick goodbye and we'll see you soon. If you join us for the game between Kempner and Texas City, good morning for now, everybody.